As the home to history-making moments since the establishment of the People's Republic of China, at just a stone throw away from Tiananmen Square, the Beijing Hotel was the ideal location for the Australia-China Business Council's flagship summit to celebrate the blossoming Sino-Australian business relationship. Held to coincide with Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard's inaugural state visit to China, the Australia-China Economic and Trade Cooperation Forum emerged as one of the largest events in the 38-year history of the Sino-Australian relationship. The forum was attended by over 500 leading executives and government officials from both sides of the bilateral relationship. Representatives from the China Investment Promotion Agency and the Australia-China Business Council provided welcoming remarks and set the scene for this landmark summit. Given Australia's proximity to China, Australia is the clear choice for China on bulk commodities. For example, China's demand for oil and the knowledge that demand by 2020 will be twice that of today drives many policy and economic decisions. Our National Chairman Frank Tudor spoke of the structure and significance of the large Australian commercial delegation in the context of the broader fabric of the Australia-China relationship. I feel compelled to reflect on the history of Australia's engagement with China and its implications for the state of the relationship today and its forward outlook. With stock of more than $16 billion, China has emerged as a legitimate stakeholder in 21st century Australia's economic development. It is now an undisputable part of the backbone sustaining the great Australian way of life. SEPA's Director General outlined the motivations behind China's interest in Australia as an investment destination and the prospects for future growth. Tourism Australia's Andrew McAvoy gave a comprehensive overview of the sector and its increasing significance to our economy. No other source market has grown at the pace of China through the period of the last decade. China Tourism Academy's President Dai's address reinforced the importance of our tourism relationship. The creation of knowledge partnerships between industry and the higher education sector was the focus of the forum's first panel session on research development and innovation. Sam Walsh spoke of Rio's long history of collaboration with China, the company's strategy for future growth and engagement with a range of Chinese partners. We only need to look outside to see the evidence of how far China has come in this regard. From the spectacular new airport here in Beijing to the skyscrapers, the ports, the high-speed railways and the roads linking them all together, China is transforming its infrastructure into a system that will be the envy of the world. Perhaps we Australians could learn from China's example to think ahead to the next generations and invest now in infrastructure and training required to ensure our future prosperity. There is a wealth of expertise here in China to help us with that task. Xu Cheng spoke of Bao Steel's evolving interests in Australia and the trends affecting the global iron ore manufacturing businesses. Australia, as the world's largest iron ore producing country, should be making a strong contribution to the China Australia Chinese The Australia-China Business Council was keen to promote the diversity of Australia's resources sector and profile a range of mid-tier and emerging miners. Our WA president introduced the Resources and Infrastructure Panel session. Western Australia exported $31 billion of mining and energy exports to China last year. That represents a massive 70% of Australia's total merchandise exports to China, 70% from Western Australia. And Western Australia is also the top destination for Chinese investment, with 80% of Chinese investment into Australia going to Western Australia into our energy, mining and infrastructure sectors. Joint infrastructure projects to support major resource developments as well as human capital issues featured prominently in the discussion. Sino Steel's president provided insights into the company's operations and its broader outlook for Sino-Australian trade and investment. 
从事国际经贸合作的大型跨国公司，早在上个世纪八十年代，在中澳两国政府的支持下，就与力图集团。Representing one of Australia's largest investors in both China and the wider Asian region, ANZ CEO Mike Smith spoke of the bank's evolving strategy. Australian and Chinese banks have played a key role in supporting the expansion of economic and trade linkages between our two countries. This is seeing a growing presence of Australian banks here in China, Chinese banks in Australia. And the creation of new partnerships and alliances, and investments between all of our banks. Christopher Wright, Austrade Senior Trade Commissioner, provided an introduction to a banking and financial industry panel, which focused on the strengths of Australia's banking sector. As the signature event in a three-day program, the Australia-China Business Council gave its delegates the opportunity to network and develop the foundations of long-term commercial relationships between Chinese and Australian companies across a wide range of sectors. The delegates heralded the arrival of Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard and Chinese Vice Premier Li Keqiang and their official delegations to the forum. In his second major address to the Australia-China Business Council, following his landmark speech in Sydney in late 2009, Chinese Vice Premier Li Keqiang spoke of the opportunities for diversification of the bilateral relationship into construction, engineering, and infrastructure projects. In her most significant public speaking engagement during her six-day North Asian visit, Australian Prime Minister Julia Gillard delivered a comprehensive and wide-ranging statement on bilateral relations, covering the 38-year history of the Sino-Australian diplomatic relationship. I'm here as a leader of an economically vibrant nation whose current and future prosperity is bound with China's. China's emergence as a leading nation of the 21st century is, of course, an extraordinary achievement. Not only hundreds of millions of Chinese being lifted out of poverty, but China's contribution to global growth is huge. Australia's role as a stable, reliable, and high-quality supplier of energy and mineral resources to China is the bedrock of our comprehensive economic partnership. Australia's resources support China's ongoing development. China's growth contributes directly to Australia's prosperity. Recent analysis by the Australia-China Business Council shows that Australian trade with China. Generated income equivalent to more than ten thousand dollars per Australian household per year. Australia welcomes and strongly encourages China's positive international engagement. Chinese investment is welcome in Australia. The Australia-China Economic and Trade Corporation Forum has emerged as the premier platform for dialogue between industry and government leaders on the Australia-China relationship. What lessons do you think Australia should take away from today's ACBC bilateral trade forum, and what actions should follow? I think the most key points were made by Sam Walsh from Rio Tinto and Xu Lijiang, president of Baosteel, both of whom made the point that this supply-demand equation that currently exists will change, and there'll be a time when prices fall and the demand won't be there. I think the takeaway from this trade is what does Australia have to do to plan for the future for that eventuality? We should take away from this forum uh, that uh, the peoples uh, of our part of the world, four billion people,、um, are going to develop their economies at very rapid rates. So, Australia's moment in the sun 
is going to be these next 50 years. We can't do that unless our government is very close and working close, very cleverly with the Chinese government. It's very critical, Duncan. We think um, right now we've got a situation where Australia is only investing 0.7% its outbound FDI into a country which is its top trading partner. It's a great day, a great forum, and I think that if we can make this an ongoing event between our two countries, uh, we'll do excellent business as a result of it. Thank you. The event also had extensive print and television media coverage in both Australia and China and played an important role in helping develop further the close relationship between Australia and China.